what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out wwe matches that can actually kill you this should be an interesting video i know they always say do not try this at home lead this to the train professionals uh yeah that includes matches too you know don't don't be sitting up there and uh, uh trying to have a toc match at your crib there's a good chance it's probably not going to go the way you think it will so be careful with that and as you guys can see i have the championship uh hung up on the wall back there you see that um i was finally able to hang it up there i'm still the undisputed youtube wrestling champ of the world and uh you know i just you know don't have it on my shoulder right now it's hung up in the back so you can see it in all its glory and for the person that keeps challenging me bro i see you in the comments in every video you know who you are he challenges me every time ever since i brought out the championship he's been challenging me to a match for the title i see your challenge my guy i just want you to understand that if i accept your challenge not am not am i going to beat you I'm going to embarrass you because you keep commenting the same thing. You want my attention. You got my attention. It's okay. You name the time. You name the place. You name the stipulation. doesn't matter. I'm going to embarrass you. So you'll forever know not to ever comment in my video about challenging the undisputed champ for his title. I'm going to teach you a lesson. But enough of that. We're going to get right into this video. I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. <laughs> Let's do this thing, man. By itself is already really dangerous. Sure, the fights would be choreographed, but the stunts are oh real. And your mistake can result in someone losing a tooth or yep. even having their neck broken. Oh. To keep fans watching, WWE has continuously created new match types. The most exciting ones are, unfortunately, usually the most dangerous ones. Of course. Some of these are such high risk that WWE has been forced to make them safer or even ban them outright. Yeah, man. Who remembers when the Elimination Chamber was didn't have the padding on it? And it was literally steel grates everywhere. Now, I know a lot of people were saying, oh, they added the pad. It's not the same. Well, I mean, come on now. <laughs> when you really think about it, bro, these are individuals that are they're risking their bodies to entertain us. I don't have a problem with them having the pads on the outside. If anything, they need that shit. Because, you know, even though it was different when we first got introduced to the Elimination Chamber, we don't need wrestlers shorting their careers and their livelihoods to entertain us in that level, bro. Like, I'm all for them trying to be as safe as possible in certain situations. One of the most painful and unforgiving matches in WWE is the Elimination Chamber. Yes, sir. The original chamber that debuted in Tizen 2 weighed about 10 this. tons and was made out of steel. It looked like an awesome structure, but it was not awesome for those who had to wrestle in it. Ew. There was no padding, so landing on the metal grating outside the ring always oh my hurt. God. The other thing that made the Elimination Chamber dangerous was its height and shape. Wrestlers were able to climb to the top of the chamber pods, but there wasn't much space to move around. This made it difficult to hit high flying moves properly. Mm -hmm. Rob Van Dam infamously landed on Triple H's throat during the first Elimination mm -hmm. Chamber match because he had to crouch while on top of the pod. About 15 years later, in 2017, WWE redesigned the Elimination Chamber. The chamber was made taller, making it easier for wrestlers to perform moves from yep. on top of the pods. WWE also added padding, which made Lenny and the steel structure less painful. Just from its name, it's clear why the first blood match poses such a risk. Ooh. The goal of the match is to make your opponent the first to bleed by any means necessary. Yep. The match is already dangerous because of the use of weapons but the real danger comes from the open wound to bleed wrestlers do actually cut their heads usually using a small razor blade mm -hmm. they hide in their boot or that a referee will give to them secretly this can lead to infection both for the wrestler with the open cut and anyone who comes in contact with the blood this might be why wwe hasn't done a first blood match since 2008 now wrestlers have bled in other matches but since someone needs to be busted wide open to win a first blood match that's the reason it is so dangerous the latter match is meant and because you know they're trying to you know keep their investors it's still a pg product in aew oh it's a free-for-all it's a bloodbath <laughs> bleed wherever you want to bleed but in wwe no uh cut that out <laughs> most favorite match in all of wrestling part of the reason is because of the high risk the match presents mm -hmm. to win a ladder match a wrestler has to grab whatever is hanging above the ring usually a championship while ladder matches can kind of be as dangerous as the wrestlers involved want them oh to be, gosh. there is always a certain level of risk, simply because you have to climb above the ring to win. Another reason is due to how the ladder matches evolved over the years.
the years. Most ladder matches usually involve big, high-risk stunts, which the fans have come to expect to see. Of course. This makes the match less safe, and we've seen many wrestlers suffer some painful injuries due to spots going wrong. Dean Ambrose got a cut on his head at WrestleMania Ooh, 31 when he got powerbombed through a ladder oh outside my of the God. ring. Of course, Joey Mercury's that one right facial there. injury in 2006. That was one of the coldest spots because it was just so brutal when you saw the aftermath. That wasn't no blade job. He legitimately got his face busted open by the ladder. And it was brutal. I mean, if you ever seen that clip, I'm sure it's on YouTube, somewhere on the internet, bro. It's brutal, bro. It, that, it, uh, bruh. <laughs> they had to get him out of there. Because that shit was hardcore unintentionally. Woo. Which is exactly how wrong a ladder match can go. Another popular match type is Hell in a Cell. Mm -hmm. The ring is surrounded by a giant steel cage, and, as the name implies, all hell breaks loose. Similar to the ladder match, Hell in a Cell can sort of be as dangerous or as safe as wrestlers want to make it. However, the cell has caused so many yep. injuries that it can't be ignored. Of course, the most famous is Mankind getting thrown off the structure always. in 1998 and accidentally falling through the top of the cell later Jesus in the match. Christ. Shane McMahon did something similar when he performed an elbow drop from the top of Hell in a Cell but at there was WrestleMania a crash 32. Pad. The impact caused McMahon's belly button to get blown out among Whoa, I didn't know that. God damn. How does that even happen? And the crazy thing is, he had a crash pad. And it's still, I'm going to be honest with you, even with that crash pad, it still look, that shit still look brutal. Other injuries. In 2000, Rikishi fell straight down onto a truck and injured his hip, which never fully recovered. Wow. Even non-wrestlers aren't safe. At Judgment Day 2002, Didn't know that. Chris Jericho fought Triple H inside Hell in a Cell. The referee, Tim White, got shoved oh. into the wall of the cell, resulting in him injuring his shoulder and ending his career. Damn. Easily the most dangerous match type in WWE history is the Inferno, Inferno match. match. How yep. an Inferno match works is that the ring is surrounded by fire. That's already pretty dangerous, but what makes the match so risky is that the only way to win is by setting your opponent on fire. Mm -hmm. There are no tricks either. A wrestler is engulfed by real flames. Yep. Fire is extremely dangerous to work with because the smallest mistake can result in serious injuries or even death. Mm -hmm. Fire can also spread fairly easily, also making it a risk for everyone nearby. That's why WWE has only ever done five Inferno matches in the company's entire history. In 2013, Kane fought Bray Wyatt in a Ring of Fire match. It was similar to an Inferno match, but nobody was set on fire, mm -hmm. and Wyatt won via a pinfall. In 2020, Bray Wyatt, as the Fiend, fought Randy Orton <sighs> in a Firefly Inferno match. Yeah, the fire was placed right on the barricade and not the edge of the ring making the match much safer. The match was also filmed and broadcast later and yeah. no fans were in attendance. The Fiend did get set on fire, but all these precautions made the most recent Inferno match safer than the previous one. Yeah, that's it's not, unlikely to- Let's not talk about that match. That's just, that's just, yeah, okay. Hey, kudos to anyone that was ever involved in anything related to flames in WWE, cause uh, that's, um, that's just that's just a different level of, of commitment. Even if you guys remember the ECW clips I was checking out, how everyone was just falling through flaming tables. Bro. Don't try this at home, kids. Not even just kids. Nobody try this at home. This is yeah, nah, don't don't set your table on fire and try to go through it. I'm telling you. It's not going to end the way you think it will. WWE will ever do an Inferno match again, but if they do, it'll likely be similar to what Orton and The Fiend did, or the Reign of Fire match. Which WWE weapons are the safest, and which are the most dangerous? Oh, we rank man. Them that, was, that was a good one, man. That was a fantastic one. It more or less proves what I was saying at the beginning of the video. Do not try this at home. Lead this to the professionals. Even the professionals sometimes end up getting hurt. So what makes you think you won't get hurt? You know what I'm saying? So comment down below. Let me know what's your favorite type of gimmick match of all time. And we're talking about ladder matches, TLC matches, Inferno matches, First Blood matches, Hell in a Cell. You know, anything, any type of stipulation match. What's your favorite stipulation match of all time in wrestling? But I appreciate all the love and support. You guys have shown on the channel. Road to 150K. And still... Your undisputed YouTube wrestling champion of the world. 
See y'all next time. Peace.